Travels by Broomstick comes to you from South Wales, the land of the dragon. Oh, and sheep. We got lots of sheep. Welcome to all you good people out there in podcast land. So let's get the broomstick out the garage and off we go. Today's journey takes us to Penalta Park in Hengoid, near Caerphilly, in South Wales. Today's episode is all about the mysterious Moggy that was caught on camera prowling around the park in Penalta. I want to give a big shout out to the lovely Michelle who commented, looking forward to a big cat documentary, so this episode is especially for you. On the 29th of October 2022, the South Wales Argus reported Big Cat Spotted near Penalta Park in Caerphilly. Tom Moody reports that an alleged panther sighting has been caught on camera after a rather large cat was spotted stalking Park Penalta. One reader was left in total disbelief after spotting a wild cat walking across the mountainside in Penalta. The footage was taken in September by Liam Cooper, who said that he spotted the beast whilst at work, after one of his colleagues suggested that the animal might be a big cat, or even a panther. He grabbed his phone to record the footage before the animal disappeared behind the trees. Liam expressed that just because he'd never actually seen a big cat living in the area, it doesn't mean to say that there are none. Big cats are by nature incredibly elusive and will go out of their way to remain out of sight and concealed in the countryside. There are many stories of big cats in British folklore, also referred to as anomalous big cats or alien big cats phantom cats and mystery cats. They've all been described as panthers, pumas or black cats. However, the existence of big cats in a breeding population has been rejected by many individual experts owing to the lack of convincing evidence for the presence of these wild animals. Although there have been many cases of recovered individual big cats, which are generally believed to have been escaped zoo animals or released exotic pets. These big cats have been illegally obtained. And when the cats become difficult to manage after they become too big to handle, they are released in order to avoid expensive rehoming costs, especially after the introduction of the Dangerous Wild Animals Act of 1976. In British folklore, the beast of Bodmin Moor is a phantom wildcat that lives on Bodmin Moor in Cornwall, England. Bodmin Moor became the centre of strange sightings with reports of mutilated livestock and slain wildlife. There were over 60 sightings of a black panther-like big cat that was supposedly three to five feet long with yellow eyes that would glow in the darkness of the wild and rugged landscape of the mysterious moors. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food conducted an official investigation led by Simon Baker and Charles Wilson on July 19, 1995. This was to find the beast of Bodmin Moor, but there was no verifiable evidence for the presence of a big cat found in the area. Only days later, a large cat skull was found by the River Foy. It was measured about four inches long by seven inches wide and possessed three sharp prominent canines. The skull was missing its lower jawbone. It was sent off to the Natural History Museum in London for verification. A team of entomologists and zoologists determined that the skull was genuine However, after some investigation, the skull was found to be that of a young male leopard that had not naturally died in Britain, but had been imported as part of a leopard skin rug. An investigation held in 1997 was made after a farmer from St. Austell, Cornwall, found bite marks on farm animals. He found tracks, droppings and new photographs emerged where these photographs were taken through binoculars and clearly showed an adult female jaguar that could possibly be pregnant. Some say that owner of the Plymouth Zoo animal trainer Mary Chipperfield had released three of her pumas into the wild following the closure of the zoo in 1978. She had arranged to transfer five of her pumas to the nearby Dartmoor Wildlife Park. However, three of them, which included a breeding pair that were very dear to her, had supposedly escaped. So when the cage arrived at Dartmoor Wildlife Park, it only contained two pumas. Mary Chipperfield later broke down and said that she had released the three pumas onto the moor rather than give them up to another home. However, her husband, Roger Cowley, denies these claims. 
Mary Chipperfield's case is not an isolated one. There have been many documented cases of big cats who were once pets, circus animals or zoo animals that have been released into the wild. In 1903, a Canadian lynx was shot in Devon. An analysis of the big cat suggests that prior to its death, it had spent a significant amount of time in captivity. It is now in a collection of taxidermied wild animals in Bristol Museum. In 1980, a puma was captured in Inverness Shire in Scotland. This capture followed several years of big cat sightings in the area. The sightings of this big cat led a farmer by the name of Ted Noble to make a cage trap and he did in fact manage to capture it. The puma was taken to the Highland Wildlife Park Zoo, where it was given the name Felicity. Zoo director Eddie Orbell explained that Felicity was very tame and that she enjoyed tickles. He said that she was probably an abandoned pet. Felicity lived out her natural life happily in the zoo, and when she died, she was taxidermied and placed on display in the Inverness Museum. In 1988, a jungle cat was killed after being accidentally hit by a car on Hailing Island. The taxidermied remains were taken to be added to a collection in the Hampshire Museum Services. Then, in 1991, a Eurasian lynx was shot near Norwich in Norfolk. It killed around 15 sheep within just two weeks. The story was thought to be a hoax for many years, but in 2006, it was confirmed that this incident was indeed true and that the taxidermied lynx is now in the hands of a private collector. The police reports were released, which stated that the lynx had probably escaped from a facility in the area that had been a breeding program for animals, including the Eurasian lynx. In 2001, the beast of Barnet was spotted by a woman named Carol Montague from Cricklewood. It was sitting on a fence between two local gardens. She rang the police and was apparently greeted with condescending <laughs> laughter and disbelief. But eventually the police took the call seriously and they arrived to find the lynx sat as Carol had described on a fence, calmly cleaning its paws. The petrified police looked on in shock and backup was called. The police, a senior vet, with a tranquilizer gun, the head lion keeper at London Zoo, and the RSPCA's animal collection officer all arrived on the scene. The lynx took one look at them and ran off, lunging over fences in an attempt at freedom. It ran across the school playing fields, a tennis court, it ran across the main road and finally was captured in the stairwell of a block of flats. Then it was taken to London Zoo, where they believed that she had been held in captivity illegally. Treated for malnutrition and a broken paw, she was nursed back to health, made a full recovery and was lovingly named Lara. Aww. Lara was transferred to the Parc Zoologique in Paris, France, where she lived out her days happily and gave birth to many cubs. In 2000, an 11-year-old boy from Trelech in Monmouthshire in South Wales was attacked by a black leopard-like animal. Josh Hopkins was with his brother searching for their pet cat named Sylvester near his home when he saw something move in the long grass. He thought that he had found his cat, but soon realized that this was something much bigger. As Josh got closer, it struck him with its big paw and swiped at his face. He saw the blood fly past his eyes and genuinely thought that he was going to die. Josh suffered five claw marks to his left cheek. Each one was an inch apart and also a puncture wound under his chin where the big cat had hooked its claw. He needed urgent medical attention. His mother, Rosemary Hopkins, rang the medical services and the police immediately. Josh was treated with antibiotics at a nearby medical centre. There had been a few local sightings of large black cats in the area, with many being spotted on the farmlands and walking across countrysides in lanes and, and crossing country roads at night. These had been spotted by passing motorists. Neighbours of the Hopkins family revealed that they had lost a few of their chickens in the recent weeks leading up to the attack. But even after bringing in the big cat specialist Danny Neenham, who spent over four hours at the scene and met with police officers, concluded that Josh had indeed been mauled by a big cat. Following this attack, there was no sign of the big black cat, dubbed the Beast of Trelech. In British folklore, the Beast of Exmoor is a phantom cat that is said to roam the fields of Exmoor in Devon and Somerset. Sightings were first reported in the 1970s. 
And then the elusive Exmoor beast became notorious in 1983 when a South Malton farmer named Eric Lay claimed to have lost over a hundred sheep in the space of just three months. All of these sheep were apparently killed by violent throat injuries that are consistent with big cat attacks. Farm animal deaths in the area have been blamed on the beast of Exmoor ever since. There was even a report of the beast of Exmoor fishing, using its huge paw to try and catch the fish from the river Baal. Many locals believe the beast to have a lair in the old mine workings on the moor. That this big beast that resembles a panther or a puma is nocturnal, and to this very day there are people who are deathly afraid to go out into the moorlands at night. In 2006, a farmer from Devon found a skull which was confirmed by the British Big Cat Society to belong to a puma, but the official statement is that the Beast of Exmoor is, just like the Beast of Bobmin Moor, a legend of English folklore and nothing more. That doesn't sound very realistic to me because legends don't eat sheep. The wildcat of Woodchester had local residents in a mad panic in January 2012 when mysterious mutilated animals were found. Numerous reports of a large black cat were reported by local Woodchester residents over the years. One witness stated that they had seen a big black cat the size of a large dog at the front of Bear Hill and another person had seen the cat of the same description in the fields bordering Selsley Road. In February 2011, there was footage captured on CCTV at an industrial estate of a large black cat prowling around an empty car park in the middle of the night. When a clear piece of evidence was found in the snow in January 2010 after a local resident saw a large black cat the size of a Labrador dog running down a country lane. The paw prints found in the snow were huge, with the animal's stride being over 120 centimetres in length along with what looked like dragging tail marks that was evidently from a big cat. There were more than a hundred sightings logged by the Gloucestershire Police in 2005, including another CCTV camera catching the big cat crossing the main road in Sirencester. 2012, however, saw a deer killed in the Woodchester woodlands. There was no doubt that this deer was indeed a victim of a big cat attack. The carcass showed clear evidence that this had been killed by a large predator because of the injuries to the deer's neck and the way it had been consumed with the high-value organs being devoured first. A team of experts set up trail cameras. They took DNA samples for testing and even took plaster casts of large paw prints that had been visible around the kill site. All evidence was sent for analysis by various experts for further identification. Within a week, two or more dead deer were found. This was in the local area where residents had said that they had seen a large black cat again. Further samples were taken for evidence and big cat expert Frank Tunbridge was quoted as saying that it was very likely to be a big cat kill following a visit to the location in person. Frank Tunbridge went on to say that DNA results confirming what kind of animal was involved would be really exciting and would make this one of the best evidence kills in Gloucestershire. Twelve miles away from where this big cat attacked its first deer, a frantic call was made to the authorities by a private owner of wallabies, explaining to them that three of his wallabies had been viciously attacked. Again, big cat expert Frank Tunbridge was in no doubt that this was the same predator that had mutilated the deer, saying that there was no other creature besides a big cat that could bring down and kill the wallabies. The field where they were kept was surrounded by a seven-foot fence. No entry signs were visible, so the big cat must have jumped into the enclosure. The big cat had struck over two nights. The first night it killed two wallabies, and the second night it came back and killed the third. A fourth wallaby, had died from a heart attack. The carcasses had been ripped open in a similar way to the deer that had been found. Unfortunately, the DNA test returned with the very disappointing announcement that there was no wildcat DNA found and instead the DNA had been from a fox. Sadly, for those who rather liked the idea of a mysterious beast roaming the countryside, there was no sign of any evidence of a big cat. There is something very exciting about the idea that there could be big cats roaming about the UK. The presence of wildcats is something that continues to resurface time and time again. In fact, there was a huge surge of sightings of British big cats during lockdown. 
and they were thought to have become much more bolder as humans had to remain in their homes. The big cats were seen closer to towns and villages, scavenging for food just like urban foxes. Most of the sightings were of big black cats similar to a puma. The UK has only one native big cat, and this is the Scottish wildcat, as well as wildcat and domestic cat hybrids known as the Callis cat. But the big cats spotted in England and Wales are much larger, and they are a non-native species. Others suggest that big cats could be survivors from the Ice Age, when creatures such as lynxes, lions, leopards and sabre-toothed tigers were found in the British Isles. These animals have thought to have been extinct for many years. In the 2013 award-winning book Feral, Searching for Enchantment on the Frontiers of Rewilding, George Monbiot argues that humans are programmed to notice things that could be big cats because they posed a threat in prehistoric times. This is very similar to Richard Freeman's ancestral memory theory, where there is a global template for monsters, the same types of paranormal mystery animals reported all over the world in nearly every culture, from phantom dogs to big cats to lake monsters, dragons, Bigfoot, and even flying creatures like the Mothman. This is because the human race was once only a couple of thousand creatures, and at that time, there would have been a lot of things in existence that they would have been in mortal danger from. Things such as the big cats from that era. All of these creatures would have provoked a fight or flight survival response in our ancestors. And this is still imprinted in us today. That deep-rooted fear has become hardwired into our subconscious. George Monbiot also explains in his book the concept of rewilding, which he defines as resisting the urge to control nature and allow it to find its own way, which I personally think is very Dr. Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park, and I love it. So the first question I have to ask you is how many brooms would you rate Park Penalta? Well, I'm going to give it three and a half. Did you enjoy your adventures in Park Penalta? I did, yes, it was very good. They have so many different trails. I really love walking all around Park Penalta. It's a beautiful place. The dogs really enjoyed it. And I did. Okay, so my second question is, what is your favourite big cat story? The Beast of Bobmin Moor. Oh, that's very spooky. Yeah, because it sounds like Bobby Moor, doesn't it? <laughs> the Beast of Bobby Moor. Yeah, the Beast of Bobby Moor. <laughs> so do you think there really was a big cat in Park Penalta? There's a picture of one and I've seen it. And as we all know, the camera doesn't lie. Unless, of course, it's photoshopped. Photo who? <laughs> I actually don't think it was photoshopped. I think it might have been just a really big cat, like a, like a Maine Coon or something like that. I think if you look at the picture and put it in proportion to the landscape, I think it's a big cat. A very big cat. I just don't think there's enough food or forestry to support such a big cat. Although, I did speak to a farmer and he did say a sheep would die in. Well, not just that. There are hundreds of rabbits up in Park Penalta. But how many hundreds of rabbits will it take to feed a big cat? Not that many. So have you ever seen a big cat? I've been to the zoo once or twice. <laughs> have you ever seen a big cat wandering around Park Penalta or anywhere else for that matter? No, I can't say as I have. I'd like to, though. Yeah, I'd like to see one, but I think I'd be terrified because I fed leopards in a zoo once, and it was a terrifying experience. The trainer was like, you've got to put your thumb in and make sure the cat doesn't grab you. It was, I mean, it was a wonderful experience, but it was a terrifying one. Also, I went to another place where they took us in a pickup truck into this big lion enclosure, it wasn't even an enclosure, they were wandering sort of free and they were just all lying there in the sun and you could get really close to them. And I was absolutely pooping my pants. They were gorgeous. They were absolutely gorgeous. But I just think like, oh my gosh, if I saw one of the, those behind my house or if I was just there walking Max and Frank and then all of a sudden this big leopard came out or something, I think I'd be like, oh my gosh. Sounds a bit like long leap. Oh, safari park. Yes, long lead. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they would just wander around your car. Yeah, or in it, if you need to keep the doors open. It's like the game you used to play. It's like a game of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's the chicken? Gobble, gobble. I know. They, they might eat you. 
I hope you've all enjoyed today's adventure. I hope you've all had a magical time. I would just like to say thank you again to Michelle for requesting this topic and also a big thank you to Ethan who helped us with our big cat research. Thank you for listening, guys, and we look forward to seeing you next time. This episode is like a big cat drinking game. Take a shot every time we say big cat and you'll be absolutely floored. (laughs) I am joking on second thoughts. Don't do that. That's really dangerous. (laughs) That concludes this edition of Travels by Broomstick. We hope you enjoyed our adventures and we look forward to seeing you next time. Please like and subscribe and turn on episode notifications.